Welcome back to PLOS Politics. Uh, former President Tolushago Basunja has stated that President Mohamed Buhari needs to meet with Namdi Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, before the insecurity crisis in the southeast gets out of hand. The former president disclosed that there was nothing wrong in Buhari having a meeting with Kanu. He added that he would want to meet Kanu himself in order to talk to people like him, to know his worries and other variables. What are your worries? The former president pointed out also that the army's tough response to pro-Biafra sentiments is not the solution. And uh, joining us to discuss this, we have Bill Dung Shoumi, a political analyst, and Terence Kwanom, a security expert. But just before we get into that conversation, we want to, of course, uh, speak with a PLOS TV reporter who's currently live in Ikoyi, uh, where there seem to be some uh, new developments over there, the collapsed building. Um, thanks for joining us, uh, Zika, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, um, hold, on, hold on, Mr. Kwanam. Ungozika, uh, okay, so give us a, a quick uh, break of what's going on over there. Yes, hold on, Mr. Kwanam and Mr. Shoumi. Um, Ungozika, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Let's hear you. What, what exactly is going on in uh, Ikoya at the moment? Just a few minutes ago, the war at the site stopped immediately, and we believe that Mr. Fadi the, 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 the developer of that structure has been found and not his body has been taken out of the site. Okay, you know, so that is the current of the that's currently that what is happening there right now. And it's all sad that the work has stopped. And some families are still looking for their for the uh, people that are missing are all complaining that immediately the body was found the workers stopped working it's so, so what, what you are saying is here. what you are saying is that the body of the uh, developer of that property femio shibona has been found and yes, it has been found. when his body was found work was put on pause the rescue yes. efforts were put on pause and families are still complaining because they are still searching for their, their loved ones. Exactly. So, so has work resumed currently? What did you say? Has work resumed currently or we are still on pause? What you say? I'm asking has work resumed or it's still on, on a break? The work hasn't resumed but I just go back to the site. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, much Ngozika. If uh, there are any updates, we'll definitely reach back to you again. All right. Um, Mr. Shoumi, good evening once again. Uh, Biadun Shoumi, can you hear us? Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm fantastic. So let's get you in on, on the conversation. Uh, former President Tolusha Gara Basenjo believes that the President, Mohamed Buhari, should create time and space for dialogue with the IPOB leader, Namdikan, who is currently, of course, being held by the security agencies. Do you agree with him that this is, is something that is important enough uh, to be done? Uh, yes. Um, President Tobaso Joy is spot on. Um, he's very experienced and he had gone through this before. What people were not told at that time was that Obasanjo ensured that there was a form of dialogue between um, his government and informal dialogue between his government and um, the uh, Niger Delta militants at that time. Same thing also happened um, in relation to Ghanaian dance OPC when they were making some trouble. While the federal government would, uh, did show some strength, but then they ensured that it was um, commensurate uh, it goes along with um, uh, informal negotiation. So what he's saying basically is that the issues need to be very well comprehended by all, particularly by Mr. President. Um, in the first instance, we have a major problem with huge un unemployment. There is a huge restlessness everywhere in the country. On the second part, there is poverty all over the land. The cost of food has gone up tremendously. So many people are finding it difficult to survive. So therefore, we have a very fertile ground. You know, for those who are disaffected with the present structures of the country, 
you know, to uh, decide to do one thing or the other, you know, to express their disagreement or their grievances. So Abbasika is saying, listen, this is not a problem that we can wish away. We need to now begin to engage people uh, who are affected with our country and to try and find out what are their issues and how can these issues be dealt with you know, within the confines of the law, while at the same time, um, you know, uh, calming people restiveness. Yeah. Um, responding alone by federal might might not solve the problem. And precisely, uh, Obasanjo is right on this. Um, that is one thing which um, we hope Mr. President would um, listen to. Yeah, well, uh, or, or, or hold on, Mr. Show me. Um, uh, Terence Kwanon, mm -hmm. can you hear us? Terence Kwanom, can you hear us clearly? All right, while well, we try to uh, connect uh, properly with uh, Terence Kwanom, who's a security expert. M Mr. Shaumi, I, I want you to go on and share your views on dialoguing with a group that may not be open to dialogue. And how difficult would, would that be to, you know, to pull off? Is, is there ways that you would need to convince the group um, that they need to come in and dialogue? Yes, the gov federal government has a bargaining chip currently. Kano is in custody uh, on two issues. One um, is purely legal matter, which is about um, the violation of the MBC Act, which led to his bail. But again, it was federal government that caused Kano by invading his house, you know, to flee the country. Now, the second issue is his rendition from Kenya, uh, which under international law, many legal experts believe is highly illegal. Of course, it is illegal. It's quite obvious. Uh, but uh, they have Kano in custody. So with Kano, uh, they can easily engage in discussion with Kano to look at how this, his grievances can be addressed within the present um, political realities. That is, you know, through lawful means, um, we have the National Assembly and all that. Uh, and that depends on if the federal government is willing to restructure the country. I don't think Kano will settle for anything less than restructuring, you know, or outright um, dismember, dismemberment of the country. Nobody wants the country divided. But we have to listen to our youths who are grieved. It's not only in Southeast, they are grieving South South, they are grieving Middle Belt, they are grieved in Santa Cardinal, they are grieved in Southwest. So, and that is what Obasanjo is saying. He's saying basically we need to sit down with our people who are grieved in different parts of the country and find out their grievances and look at how these issues can be addressed. Basically, that is what uh, Mr. President is saying, uh, former president is saying. And this is nothing short of calling for um, a, a conference on restructuring. That is, we need to not take the issue of restructuring seriously to avoid um, the sudden collapse of the country. Nobody wants that. So uh, I hope Mr. President will listen to uh, the wise counsel. Oh, well, that, that, that's, that's, um, it's a tough one, you know, because of the angles that you've mentioned. Um, the IPOB is asking for restructuring or at least for, you know, wanting out of the country. Um, and of course, the federal government will not be having that on its table when they are talking about a negotiation or dialogue. So it might be a little tough um, there. Terence Quanum, uh, can you hear us clearly now? Terence Quanam, can you hear us? Well, we're still struggling uh, with uh, hearing uh, Mr. Quanam. Um, Mr. Shomi, so I, I want you to go further with, you know, that, that aspect of it. Um, the IPOB leader, and of course, if you listen to them, a lot of times they say it's Biafra or death. It means that they are not open for any other, you know, consideration or they, they have nothing else that they, they are putting on the table. Um, so, so this makes it difficult to even imagine dialogue. And also remember that the body language of the current administration doesn't seem to be one um, that would, you would expect will be open to any sort of dialogue. Um, so does, do these two factors make it harder to even achieve? Um, well, let me address the first one. The first one is on the part of um, I, IPO. Yes. Um, what we have actually said is... Um, um, true that IPOB is saying that is either they go it alone or nothing else. But that is a maximalist position. If you ask those who are experienced in political negotiations or even negotiations when it comes to employment, 
they will tell you that you go into a negotiation from a strong point. You go in with your biggest, you know, eat, and then hoping um, you settle for something close to it if you actually can't get what you want. So they have taken a maximalist position on this very issue. And therefore, um, negotiate, ne negotiating with them, it's easier rather than more complex because at the end of the day, when you negotiate, you put issues on the table, common sense will prevail, you want certain issues, this is how, how far we can go with it, and then this is how it will get done, and this is how it will be measured. So it's not something strange. If you watch international politics, that's exactly what happens. You have a maximalist position, and then common sense will prevail. For instance, what could be more hard, uh, more hard than the negotiations between the issue between Russia and United States over North Stream, North Stream 2, you know, involving Germany. But at the end of the day, it has been completed. You know, those companies threatened with sanctions are not sanctioned. And because that's due to some back yard um, negotiations that took place. So we should not assume that negotiations will not satisfy um, IPOB or IPOB supporters or people in Southeast. I think it is worth trying it. The second part of the issue is on the federal government. Um, uh, I, do, I don't want to use the word Cassitron. Uh, the federal government um, dogmatic, you know, position that um, the, the 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 you know what they call this this bemberment is not what I would use. I would say that the right to self determination of the people, you know, is uh, uh, is not negotiable. You know, that is that cannot be correct. The, 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 the self-determination issue is negotiable, you know, whether from the angle of those who are saying we are demanding for it or from the angle of saying of those who are saying, no, we won't give it. You know, it is still negotiable. Both of you still have to sit down and then agree on a new structure, you know, that can work. What the federal government cannot do is to say, well, we don't agree with the right to self-determination. Even though you have signed uh, international conventions, the UN Charter, you know, is there. The African People's Charter on Human Rights is there, on people's rights is there, which we have voluntarily signed. So you cannot turn around and say you won't negotiate with your people um, over uh, self-determination issues. You know, they, you have to negotiate. So the federal government cannot take that extreme position of saying we will not even touch this issue because we don't want the country divided. If you don't want the country divided, the best way is to negotiate. Negotiate with those who are aggrieved, and that is what Thomas is saying. Both parties are holding maximalist position, and that is correct. In negotiation, then you come down and settle on restructuring, and that is the only way out of this lodger. All right. Uh, Mr. Show, in, in one minute, I want you to respond to those who say that when you open the door for negotiation, it basically is also creating space for other agitations and other groups to spring up knowing that well there would be negotiation negotiation at the end and instead of what you know instead of negotiation it's best that you put your foot down and ensure that you crush every form of uh, agitation uh, to ensure that they don't keep springing up but what, what would your response be to that yeah that that is uh, the what happens in dictatorial regime but fortunately we are in a democracy in democracy everything is up on the table even to express your grievances through peaceful demonstration is allowed. It's in our constitution. The right to peaceful assembly is allowed. The right to protest is a fundamental human right in a democracy. So when people, when you negotiate with one set, other sets are coming up with their demands, it means the government is responsive to the needs of the people. There will always be one demand or the other. There will always be disaffected people within a country. The most important thing is not to resort to killing your own youth or jackboot, you know, democracy. It's even better. Let them come up with all the issues so that we can sit down, talk, and agree on how we want our country, you know, to be governed. And uh, the, to, uh, how we'll ensure that there's development everywhere. And nobody, no, no, no child will be out of school. We won't have 10 million Amajiris kids on the streets. It's important to discuss all these issues. The right. Amajiris kids are, they are human beings too. They are disaffected. We cannot refuse to talk. We have to talk with every single person, every single group who is disaffected in our country today. Absolutely. Because we want to build a great, a greater Nigeria, we are, which all of us will be proud of.
I think that's why it's important. Those who are saying, uh, well, if you open the door to one discussion, well, it will lead so, to some other issues. You know, they're, 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 they're holding a dictatorial position. You cannot do that. Nigeria is a federation, you know, made right, up of several ethnic nations. I mean, you are talking of over 250 distinctive languages. Why wouldn't we negotiate? Negotiation right. should be the two. Show, um, Abiodun Shoumi, thank you very much for your time this evening. I enjoyed listening to you and uh, hearing your My perspective opinion. on these issues. So we wish you a beautiful evening ahead. Thank you. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. Nigeria's leadership recruitment process has been criticized multiple times because of the many ways with which it lacks the ability to put the best foot forward and also give the electorate the chance they seek to put the best quality of candidate in office. As a result of this weak process, candidates use all means to win an election. Sometimes it also includes violence. Sadly, Nigeria's justice system has also be, been uh, inadequate in arresting these perpetrators of violence along with their sponsors. And that is why today in the news, the United States is looking at placing visa bans on those found to be sponsoring violence in the Anambra elections. And it's not the first time we're hearing of something like this from the United States. While this may be laudable and seen as a possible deterrent, it also really hasn't worked in the past and exposes, most importantly, the failures of the Nigerian system, which should be the one preventing this violence. Sadly, with every electoral phase, promoters and sponsors of violence seem to always get away with their crimes. We cannot continue to wait for the United States to help us fix the rot in our system. We can't wait for other countries to enforce doing the right thing here in Nigeria. And until we wake up as a nation, we will not have a leadership recruitment process that the people have any faith in. And that's my take. Thank you for joining us today on PLOS Politics. Uh, we return, of course, tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. Have a great night.